If you are using a 3D software nowadays or anything that was made using a 3D software, you are probably taking it for granted even though it is a groundbreaking technology if we look at it from the timeline of the human progress. Also just a few decades ago, things were very different in fields like entertainment, architecture and design. By the way, if you want to learn how to make stylized backgrounds using Blender and Photoshop, you might want to take a look at this training. The instructor will walk you through the process of setting up a basic forest model in Blender, then he will show you how to export that to Photoshop and do some painting, and then project those textures into the model. In this training, you will learn about modeling, texturing, lighting, animation, and much more. Jose, the instructor of this course, is a talented concept artist who worked in the industry for over 8 years. You can follow along as he breaks down his process of conceptualizing, illustrating and animating a painted background that could be used for animation. The 12 hour course will start by gathering references, defining the ideas and putting them on paper by doing a little bit of sketching. After that, you will see how you can create the models, add textures and animate and render the whole scene. After that, you will learn how to paint all the details in Photoshop and project them back onto your scene in Blender. Finally, you will learn how to finish everything by rendering the final result. If you are interested in this course, you will find the necessary links in the description. The visuals that filmmakers and VFX directors are able to achieve using 3D software is mind-blowing. Also, the level of detail and realism that is displayed on screen is astonishing and nowadays sometimes indistinguishable from reality. If we stop for a moment and think about it, computer-generated images didn't look always this good. There was a time where primary polygonal models were considered groundbreaking. To give you an example, let's go back to 1982, the first cinema feature movie Tron that made extensive use of solid 3D CGI. At the time, computers could only generate static images, so to animate 3D models, the CGI artists slash mathematicians slash programmers at the time had to enter the coordinates to each image on each frame individually, such as the animation of the iconic light cycle bikes which took the team 600 coordinates to make 4 seconds of the film. Also in 1983, the last Starfighter pushed the envelope of 3D animation by incorporating fully animated 3D models such as the Gunstar vehicles, spaceships, asteroids and backgrounds rather than the traditional miniature models. This was a step forward compared to earlier films such as The Return of the Jedi which still used conventional physical models. And for the 300 scenes containing CGI in the film, each frame of the animation contained an average of 250,000 polygons, which was a lot by the standards of that time. To put things into perspective, the first Transformer movie Autobots had an average of 800,000 polygons per character and scenes naturally reached millions of polygons or tens of millions of polygons, especially fight scenes where there are multiple characters. Also in the Godzilla movie in 2014, the Godzilla character took the team of 3D artists 6 months to fully nail the textures and around half a million polygons were used during the modeling process. If we used any other means other than 3D modeling, the film could never reach the level of quality we enjoy today. So after the introduction of 3D in film many years ago, the industry realized that the potential of 3D modeling in games, advertisement, architecture, industrial design and more. And we can see clearly how this changed our world. Also the first 3D game that was released commercially was Battlezone in 1980. It is a tank game popular among the old arcade game fans. It places the player in the first person shooter's point of view and it was generally considered the first 3D game most likely because it is the first of its kind to gain commercial popularity. At the time, Tech Radar even called it fiendishly complex. By today's standards, it looked like crap of course. On the other hand, back then it was revolutionary. Just a year after the release of Battlezone, 3D Monster Maze was released in 1991 for home PC and it was a huge success. Although both Battlezone and 3D Monster Maze mirror the title of the first 3D game, they were not real 3D in the traditional sense or the 3D we know today. What these games are called today is 2.5D. While the games are doing 3D math under the hood, all the animations were in 2D. But the first game to really use 3D animation is Super Mario 64. This opened the floodgates for a much better gaming experience for generations to come. 2D games would never in a million years bring to life the adventures and the new imaginary worlds we are experiencing today. 
To give you another example of the importance of 3D modeling today, let's go to the first program to use 3D modeling for simple objects, and it was Sketchpad. It was developed by a scientist called Sutherland. It was able to model simple objects like cubes and prisms, and it was the first of its kind to be available for the personal computer, although a computer was too expensive and unavailable to the common man during the 70s. It was until the 90s, and with the introduction of 3D rendering and modeling software such as Autodesk products, that brought the possibility of using 3D software for personal and commercial use on a wide scale. Nowadays, 3D modeling and rendering is a must in the job of an architect or a designer because it proved to be a great tool to remove tons of heavy lifting, but most importantly, it is much more accurate, fast, and can do simulations and calculations that can take much longer if done manually, if not sometimes impossible. In the past, companies used to advertise their products through traditional means, but now the scope of what is possible has expanded with the ability to use 3D. Because, just like entertainment, advertising requires sometimes visual effects and animation to realize a vision. And thanks to 3D technology, this field has become much better now with much more possibilities. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And you can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.